Grüezi YouTubers. Here is the guy with the Swiss accent again. The two first videos on 3D printing covered the topics automatic switch off and creating adhesion. This video will cover the steps on how I create the necessary files and transfer it to the printer. Because my viewer Jon Raymond asked me if I can show some examples of what I printed, I will do this at the end of this video. To show you the process, I use the box printed for the auto shutoff device described in my former video. I use this example also because it is the design I use most. Usually I copy one of my earlier designs and rename it. The design of this box is also done that I can just change the dimensions and the rest adjusts automatically. I printed many boxes for my earlier projects and will show you a few at the end of this video. So let's start the creating of this auto shutoff box. To create the 3D files I use SOLIDWORKS. This is a quite expensive software and definitely an overkill for normal 3D printing. But I'm used to it and it works fine for me. There are many other products around, some of them are even free. I have to admit that I do not use sites like Thingiverse because my needs in general are very specific and I love my 3D printer exactly because it can produce nearly whatever shape I want. So my template box consists of two parts, the top and the base. The base has the necessary mounts for the PCB as well as four small shapes to stabilize the wall of the top. In addition, the bottom has four holes for the screws which connect the base to the top. The top contains four poles with holes as counterparts for the screws. This is the basic box. The places of the poles and the holes are synchronized by the software and automatically adjusted if I change the dimension of the box. So far I have a box. Now I have to make sure that the box is big enough, that the necessary holes are placed at the right place and that the mounts for the PCB really fits its holes. But let's do one after the other. I draw my PCBs with Eagle. When I created the board, I can export it as an IDF file. IDF is a 3D data interchange format and can be read by many software packages. In my case, I import it into SOLIDWORKS and create a 3D model out of it. I'm sure this procedure is possible for other tools too. If you know a way using free software, please put it into the comments. If you are not able to use your Eagle file as shown before, another possibility exists. You can draw yourself a simple representation of your PCB. I use this procedure for all modules like displays, batteries or switches. I even created a library for such devices because I do not want to create them more than one time. The models of these parts are very rough. I only make sure that the diameter for the holes are exact and the maximum dimensions are also ok. This enables me to see if I place components in places where they later conflict. I can also adjust the needed size of the box before printing it. Here you see as an example the push button used in my project and its 3D model. Another example is the Arduino Micro Pro board which I quite often use in my projects. Now I have everything put together and arranged that it creates no conflicts. So I'm pretty sure that the box will work. At the beginning I did not include the models of the parts and I usually discovered after hours of printing that I placed the hole at the wrong place or that the mounts of the PCB were at the wrong place. Now I export the model to STL files. 
SOLIDWORKS creates files for all parts. So I have to delete all files not needed for 3D printing. The next step is to slice these files and create files for the printer. I do this with Simplify 3D. This is also not a free software, but when I started with 3D printing, the free software was not good enough for me and I bought this tool. So far I'm very happy with it because it creates good files and the slicing process is very fast. But I think the open source tools catched up and it might not be necessary to use commercial software today. Usually I use 0.2 mm layer height, a temperature of 235 degrees Celsius and a heated bed temperature of 60 degrees. Because I use captain tape and hairspray as shown in the last video, I can print the first layer at nearly full speed. Before using hairspray, I had to reduce the speed for the first layer to 25% only. As you see, the slicing is extremely fast and I can simulate the printing before I save the file. After slicing, you cannot see whether you got the right or the wrong file. This is why I always save the printing file with the same name and at the same place. And because I call it a.gcode, it appears always on the top of the files. As you will see, I stick to this principle till the file is printed. Before I did this, I sometimes confused file names of similar files and printed the wrong one. Now I have to bring the file to the 3D printer. In the early days, I connected my printer with an USB cable to my PC. I did not like this concept because it was not very reliable and I had to keep the PC always on. So I quickly changed to using SD cards. But then I always had to transfer the cards from the PC to the printer and back. Not very comfortable and I thought that the spring in the SD card reader would be killed after a few hundred moves. Then I discovered a brilliant small device. An SD card with a built-in Wi-Fi from Toshiba. They call it Flash Air. This SD card connects to your Wi-Fi and produced an HTML interface to your browser. I will show you in a minute the details on how to initialize the card. To upload a file to the printer, I call the IP address of the Flash Air with the extension upload.cgi. Select the file saved before and submit it for uploading. After a few seconds, the file is transferred over the air to the 3D printer and ready for printing. The rest was covered in the previous videos. But now coming back to the Flash Air card. It has to be initialized with a tool called Flash Air. I enclose the link in the comment. Because these cards are primarily used to transfer your photos from your camera to your smartphone or your tablet, they cannot be used right away for the 3D printer scenario. I had to do some tweaking and in order to save you time, I show you now how I did it. You have to insert the card directly into your computer's SD card reader and open it up. In my case, it is drive K. You do not see a lot of files now because they are hidden. So first you have to make the hidden files visible. Then you go to the folder s underscore wlan and open the file config with your text editor of choice. Here you see a few parameters and its values. Important for the usage shown before are the following parameters. App mode has to be equal 5. App SSID, here you enter your wireless network name. The network key is the password of your wireless LAN. The app name you can choose, whatever you want. I called my printer, printer. 
then you have to set the upload to one and the upload directory to the root. After you changed or created these values, you save the file. Now the card is ready to be used in the printer. And now, as promised, I show you some prints I made with my printer. I start with simple but useful designs. The distance between the magnet and the receiver for the speed meter on my bike was too far away. So I printed a small part which solved this problem. The headlamp on the other bike did not fit properly. Again I printed a custom part and now it fits. I bought a small but useful transistor tester, unfortunately without the case. So I printed a custom housing. It has to be open in the front because I have to connect the transistors to the PCB. Often I use displays or other modules together with a breadboard. I printed cases for some of them. Here you see a Nokia display, a power supply for positive and negative voltage, a frequency generator with loudspeaker and an electronic load including the heatsink for cooling. I also printed a device which switches the TV including power amplifier off when I close the door. It works with infrared diodes used in TV remotes. This box has a small dividing wall to separate the light from the transceiver from the receiver diode. I also printed a cable holder. Here I printed modular pieces and glued them together with superglue. The next examples are very simple but again useful. A holder for my headset, a small knurled nut for my camera holder and a holder which keeps the cooling water bottle in place on my router. And last but not least I printed also a small robot with a two-way communication to the remote control and a subsystem consisting of three ultrasonic distance sensors and an A-Tiny for autonomous driving. Maybe you post your interesting prints uh, in the comments. For now I have to say bye.